you know, it involves guns and uh, shooting. Yes. I can do a <laughs> soft, smooth All right. <laughs> no, I, I, I'll transition us there. Uh, uh, Neurogaming has a second system. Their second system, so they've got the, the cinema arcade system that's similar to IMAX. Their second system is OptiTrack with stri uh, striker or strider guns. I can't remember what yeah, they're called. Striker expensive. guns. Yeah. So they've got the striker guns, OptiTrack, Rifts using Rifts connected to OptiTrack because they've got the little face plates, Backpack PC, and they're putting you in a simulation with someone else somewhere else in the world. So I played with a, with a guy in Russia. And he was mm -hmm. in a similar setup. They, they're, I think they're using Unreal. I'd have to ask him. But just the lighting, everything about that game, the, the second system, felt like a military simulation. And so we had done the World of Tanks thing. It was fun. It was, it was like a multiplayer game. The next moment, I'm strapped in, full body. They've got trackers on my knees. It's, it's better. The best body tracking I've ever tried. And I'm holding this gun... Uh, tight to my shoulder and I'm running I'm basically jogging through a space and I never had that experience before like mm. it and I have this lasting feeling of empowerment from that like I feel powerful holding this gun and I and being able to shoot people um and I don't feel comfortable I, I feel weird having had that feeling um mm. and the moment that article came out about this system that neurogaming's working on was the morning I read CNN's uh, Jeremy Balenson piece. Right. And I, I wish I had seen the Jeremy Balenson piece before I had written it because I would have linked to it and talked about it a little bit more. But I, I have some very mixed feelings about having experienced that kind of yeah. thing. So can we maybe right. quickly so, do a recap of the article that you just uh, mentioned? Yeah, let's do that. Um, so Jeremy Balenson, which we've talked about before, um, he's a researcher at the virtual uh, Stanford's Virtual Reality Human Interaction Lab, um, and we've we referenced his his, uh, his research a lot actually on, on this podcast, particularly with like the Proteus effect, which is all about um, you know wearing having uh, an avatar really does change your behavior um, in a virtual environment, and, and I mean he's done a lot of research about inter interpersonal interpersonal. Um, distances, proxemics, anyway. So he's, he's, he's a pretty big name in, in the VR research space. Um, and yeah, like you were saying, he came out with an article on CNN this week where his basically, his, his argument was that I have done research about virtual reality and training for quite some time. And the thing I've noticed is that VR is very different when it comes to, it's very effective when it comes to training. And, and reflecting off of that, he has a company called, um, uh, what was it called? Striver. Striver. Um, that they're, I believe it's like NFL uh, companies are using to train their QBs on, uh, on you know, being more effective at their game. Um, so Walmart he comes out. Uh, what's that? Walmart is using it too. Oh, okay. To train employees. So expanded. Um, so his, his argument is that there is, um, even though he says, you know, video games, um, he he does make the argument that like video games aren't directly linked to like making kids violent, but he says there is one documented case of a killer using a, a first person shooting game, uh, Call of Duty actually, um, to to improve mm -hmm. his combat skills in 2012, um, mm -hmm. and so he apparently told the court that when when you know he was he was captured, um, mm -hmm. so he makes the argument that VR is obviously a, even more realistic and 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 more of a training thing. Uh, than what Call of Duty could have done in 2012. Um, and he makes an argument that says the military has been using virtual reality to train soldiers for decades. Um, and, mm -hmm. But his main argument is that uh, virtual reality games are, are going to cause people, they're not going to cause people to become violent, um, but that um, it's, but if a possible mass shooter wants to hone his craft, we shouldn't hand him an over-the-counter digital boot camp. So, so this is, I, I think that's the main point that he's trying to make, right? Like, it's not that he's going to make kids kill each other or, or become violent all of a sudden. But if someone does want to do that and he has VR at his disposal, he could possibly use it to train himself to, to be more effective at it. I think at this, on the surface level, we probably won't disagree with that point specifically. 
However, there's there's some interesting um, things that we we called out our community on Discord, um, including actually one of the people that came in to talk about that is Anton, who Anton uh, from uh, from uh, Rust uh, Ltd. We've had him on the show before. He yes, he's he's the lead developer on um, H3 VR, the hot dogs, horseshoes, and hand grenades, which is actually I think one of the top selling games in VR, and it's basically a, the most realistic gun simulating gun simulator in VR. So he also has been approached by a lot of military contractors, a lot of people that mm. build guns, sell guns. And uh, he actually, he's, he's fully independent. He, um, he's also an interesting person to talk to about guns because as much as, even though he's building a gun simulator, he's like a big, uh, staunch, person on gun control and he's like you know i love guns or or, like i like guns but i don't want them in everyone's hands uh which i think right now there's such a hot debate going on in america every couple of months at this point uh where you know it's it's either people are like ban all guns or don't ban all arms you you should have more guns armed to teachers um so i mean we don't want to make it uh we don't want this topic to be a red versus blue thing because i mean that that doesn't go anywhere um and we want to keep this kind of more research based more science based and Mm -hmm. talk about ideas um so the the i want to i want to read his comment first because he i think anton is probably one of the more uh educated people on this topic um you guys can't see it on the screen very well so i'll read it out loud Mm. um so his his argument is that um to be i said something Oh, actually, here, here, let me read this out loud. Um, training someone to be an armed combatant and to uh, possibly enact a heinous uh, act, the skill set in question is actually several com- uh, completely separate ones. And he talks about, like, knowing how to, like, un- to, to work with jams and failures of a gun, the abstract tactical understanding of how to maximize attacking a soft target, the kinesthetic experience of firing a gun, the ability to aim down a real sight, you know, it's not a, you're not looking down a Call of Duty holographic sight or, or whatever you're in yeah, VR. Exactly. Um, the exposure to operating a real gun, um, all these things. So he goes by point by point and he talks about that. It's not that VR can't be used for those things, but it's that you can achieve and you can train for those things better using um, yes. videos from YouTube, using airsoft guns, using um, even t- paintball guns, actually. Yes. And and VR actually is probably going to be the more expensive. And, and he argues that it will actually train the wrong muscles, especially when it comes yes. to the shooting, to, uh, to, to doing things with guns. I'm like, I'm not experienced enough to like, you know, talk about them uh, from a first, first person experience, but like... He argues that it's actually not the best thing to use to train for guns, which was fascinating to hear from someone like him, where he's trying to build a very realistic simulator. And perhaps it doesn't fully disagree with Valenson's point, but it, it I think, definitely is a is something to consider. Yeah. Like, and, and honestly, and, and I want to put this point out there, like, I'm surprised that Valenson didn't, if he's writing an article about this, you would expect for him to do some kind of a pilot study have some kind mm. of like he's he's referenced he references a few you know research points in in his argument argument but like i feel like he should do something you know he should research that exactly. before he comes out and says i mean i don't know what you know what what is opinion. your what is your take you know i i i need to reread the section of uh experience on demand where he talks about uh this specific issue um as i recall the way he worded it uh in the book uh, at least the part that stood out to me was saying that, yeah, so something's very similar to this article that the military uh, uses it for training because it works. It's very blunt uh, and very simple in the way it's presented in the article. I think uh, yeah, it's more when I when I when I talked to him, I, I I actually called him up about his book, or no, I um I talked to him on the phone and then I emailed him. And it's funny, I I try to be very specific uh, in how I source my. My, the people that I talk to, because uh, we, we talked about some of this stuff at the beginning. It's just important that the medium and the ways technology could change the way we talk need to be expressed uh, as often as possible. Because if I interview someone in VR, they could use an algorithm to make themselves appear that they're smiling more, uh, and or you know, they could, they could do all sorts of things to manipulate the communication in VR. So I think it's it's good to get this sort of sourcing uh, down right. Um, but I got an email from him. I basically asked him in an email. Um, in one part of your book, you say that 
field trips in VR could be great, but they're not great yet. The, the, the difficulty of building a VR field trip is just astronomically difficult to do, and no one has really done it yet. And he, he, he clarified in a follow-up email, he thinks just the curriculum needs to get better for better VR field trips. On the flip side of that, though, there's a lot of evidence, according to him, that training in VR uh, is a home run. It's just, it makes perfect sense. And I think that, that the separation there between um, two different modes of learning or two, two different ways of learning something, and he's just saying the evidence isn't there yet for one type of learning, and he's saying the evidence is there for another type of learning, uh, is the basis of a lot of, I think, what's in this CNN article. Um, and I have to go back to read the original research uh, to really understand why training works. And and I just don't, th according to him, the the field trips just aren't there curriculum-wise to make that type of learning work. But I think what we've got there is, um, <clears throat> and, and Anton's points, being that you've got a lot of different when you, when you need to learn how to do something, there's many, many different aspects of learning how to do that thing. And some of the aspects can be replicated in VR. Some cannot. Uh, some can, but only 5 to 10 years or 30 years from now. Um, and it's a, a lot of these arguments are about degrees, uh, about how quickly you can learn, how effectively you can learn, how cheaply you can learn. Um, and I think there's a lot to mix up in, in that discussion. Like, just because it's not affordable now doesn't mean it's not going to be affordable in five years. Uh, just because yeah. you can't get some of this training now doesn't mean you can't get it in five or ten years. Right. Um, and the I aiming, think, yeah. like in terms of like aiming, uh, using different depths, right? Like your eyes uh, looking through the scope rather than in the, at the scope. Uh, I think those can be achieved with like uh, very focal displays and like, I, I agree, there's, there's a lot, the technological constraints that Anton points out, I think will probably be, uh, you know, overcome. And even if you have like a gun like Striker VR guns coming out that simulate recoil, I mean, I don't, in my, in my head, I feel like that's that's an accurate representation, but probably not. I'm sure gun people will yeah. disagree. <laughs> it's like it's not really um, yeah. feeling the same. But I mean, it's where does where does this put us? I mean, it, I think a lot of people misread the article or misread the the headlines, mm -hmm. thinking that this is the same gun debate that we've had in terms of video games causing kids to be violent. That's not his point. That's not what he's trying to argue. Um, there's there's good amount of research that says that there isn't. Although I have seen some recent mm -hmm. stuff that says there is a more of a um, there there are there's some research that says that it might make kids more aggressive, um, at least on a short term period. Topic. It's, like right. said, it's not a clear topic. And when you actually look at how difficult uh, the topic itself is, so when you just try to take it apart, one part is training. So training in VR, there's a lot of research behind it. I actually uh, know that companies are interested in training because the company I'm working for actually tries to do training in VR. And obviously the company from him also seems to be very effective with training. But when you just pick out the topic of military, what did they use training for? It's tactics. It's, you know, basically after you did the ground training, you know, you, you prowl through the mat, you kind of shoot with your weapon. And afterward, you train rather the tactics, how to approach the enemy. And later, also the military uses a lot of VR for rehabilitation, like PTSD. So it's not like they necessarily train you to shoot in VR, rather train you to do tactics. And when you just take the argument, you know, VR can make you a better shooter, right? And, and you say, if even if it's true, as long as you don't have access to a real weapon, then there is no damage from it or no harm. So, assuming uh, that this training uh, method in VR would work, still kind of doesn't take away the fact that people, sh you know, should maybe have access to guns if they, you know, could potentially kill someone. And then, um, I mean, we're definitely not a technological level right now. Maybe we will be at some point, but right now we're definitely not there where this is really a topic to discuss because. I, mean, I, I don't see anyone, you know, being able to train how to shoot with a Vive. Not that I'm a big shooter myself. You don't think actually. so? Seldomly hold a weapon. I don't think so, no. I, I don't think you can train to be good at, you know, aiming, shooting, oiling up, putting it together, you know, pistol. So when, when you, you can't feel the recoil right now, right? That's the biggest impact. 
they also don't really get a feeling for it. And also, only because you train something virtually doesn't mean that you will, you know, get this frightening experience when you actually shoot your first time in real life. So when you never I'll shoot argue... a weapon and you just did it in the... Yeah? So you're, you're right on those points, but I'll argue that the fact that, like, one of the bigger parts of guns is, like, knowing how to reload or, like, to arm, I don't know, just to, to, to work the weapon. And... and you can, I think, learn how to... Re I've learned how to reload guns in VR, and, and you know, I didn't know how an LM LMG, uh, a light machine gun gets reloaded, right? You have to open up the top, but you have you to put the, the chain of too. bullets in, and put... I mean, sure, but, like, I think, can't you argue that, like, you doing that at least five or ten times in VR is... You can learn how to use that a little bit better than you okay. can and, otherwise. And phone, uh, phone repairmen. So whenever I have to repair a phone, actually, I <laughs> had to repair a few phones recently... I watch a teardown video, I watch a YouTube video, and I do it myself. I would seldom, I, I wouldn't necessarily prefer watching someone or actually trying to tear apart the phone in VR because it's like very fuzzy. You need to kind of you know, unglue things. So, certain things you need to learn with your body. It's like the embodiment. And as long as you don't feel the pressure and you don't feel, you know, how strong you need to push the bullets, maybe you might know the procedure, but who knows? Maybe you will put it upside down or you will kind of push it there. Also, I think reloading a weapon, you could maybe learn from a video too. That's to your argument that, you know, you could get yeah. this information way easier. So what value do you get out of a VR shooting experience that you cannot get anywhere else and that right. makes you actually, you know, train? Uh, I mean, you can just take so, Call of Duty and see how they're, you know... Yeah. Yeah, yes. See, I, it's such a minefield what we're talking because we don't, we don't know the yes. effect of... You know, we don't know how effective any of these things are in VR yet. We don't know how... What what to what level it is, but I want to talk about that personal feelings I've had, and I'm I'm assuming other people have had these feelings. But have you both played Grand Theft Auto? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, have you pulled up to a spot in real life and seen a sweet bike, and pictured yourself kicking the person off the bike and taking that sweet bike? <laughs> I, I I I remember after the bikes got added to Grand Theft Auto, and I played that game for an hours and days <laughs> on end. And there would be a specific bike that I knew was the fastest bike in the game. And whenever that happens in game, uh, you you jump out of the car, you go up to the, kick the person off the bike, and you take it, and you get to go super fast the world and feel amazing. Um, I think of that every time I think of uh the effects of VR long-term use. Um, that kind of mental role-playing I did in my head, it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's 10 seconds of time or five seconds of time. My body checks myself and says, don't go out and actually do that to the person. Um, but like, I do play it out in my head. I, I did play out that sort of system. And I'm assuming that, that other people are like that. Otherwise, you know, maybe I should get checked out by a psychiatrist. Um, but, uh, <laughs> I'm assuming that if you if you if you role play these things enough in VR, you're gonna feel more comfortable uh, to some degree in real life doing some of these things in the real world. Um, it is my fear. I like. I'm not saying that that's true, but it's something that I don't think we've fully got the research mm. out. But um, do you think a sane yeah. person would actually, you know, be influenced by a virtual environment in a way that would do something that is not very sane? Or do you rather think that people who are not sane and you know, who don't have the ability to check reality how you did, okay, I don't need to kick the guy off the bike, would actually be influenced? So are we arguing here about sane people or a subset of people who are potentially not mentally sane? It's a great question. I and I yeah, think... I uh, a age deals with that question somewhat, I think. It does, and uh, I think Balenson... Age is also important, yeah. He, he was kind of specifically um, limiting himself to talk about the people that are on the fringes of, of that. They, they have the motivation and the yeah. intention to want to, yeah. to do that, you know, to kick someone off the bike. And to get to that point, they want to train themselves rather than, rather than the opposite, which is like, you do this, you, know, you play it you, for fun, and then um, would, will that make you want to actually kick the person off the bike and steal it? Um, I think so. G GTA is a great is a great example because it's it's such a weird, almost contradictory thing where they they're it's a very realistic game in a, in a lot of in in some senses and it's a very unrealistic game in a lot of other senses. But it's also a very um, 
it's also a really good game. Like it's a staple of yeah. and like the gaming industry in terms of storytelling, in terms of world building. Like, I mean, it's one of my favorite games. I'd say GTA Five. However, like I remember hearing from um, someone that was making a GTA Five VR mod. And the the creator themselves was like, "This is way too brutal, dude. Like, I don't even know if I want to keep playing this." Like, there's a video um, when they did that mod of a person in one of the walking simulators. I can't remember which one, um, but their feet are walking, and that's moving them in GTA. And they walked into a, a, a corner store and just shot the store owner, and then ran out and started just shooting people on the street. And you see their little box in the corner showing what they're doing in real life and they're holding a real gun and they're doing the walking motion in the little walking simulator. And it's just, you watch that video and realize, yeah, that's too far. Like it's, I, I hate mm. using the, 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 the pornography or obscenity uh, guideline, but like it, you'll know it you look you at that it. and go, that's, that's yeah, you'll know it when you see it. And that, that, you know, when you see it, mm. it's a little bit right. too much. And it's do you want kids doing that? Like mm. an adult doing that is one thing. A 15 year old or a 10 year old doing it is something else. Yeah, I, I, I agree with your point, but um, I would make an, an um, maybe a reference to history. So, for example, when Doom 1 or Doom 2 came out, uh, I'm pretty sure it was also in other countries, but in Germany, it was kind of you only can buy it when you're 18 or you're not allowed to officially show it. Now, after, you know, how long is it, 20 years, you look at Doom 2 and you think, okay, that's just a cartoon game. I mean, no one would actually take it seriously. So they even removed it from the list of banned games. So when it came out, it was like so shocking. Oh my God, you can shoot at monsters. It's so realistic. I mean, even if you look at advertisement from, you know, 1998, 1999 about virtual reality, oh my gosh, so crazy. And also the games industry, everyone oh my, said, oh, whoa, it's so evil. You're shooting at each other. And turned out, no, it's not that evil. And obviously, well, you could make that. an argument that you, I mean, it's, but, but it it's kind of, you never experienced it was that it, VR and now it's crazy. It might have been like a, uh, it was like one big example, but since then we've had so many other uh, games that are yeah, similar where true. it's saturated and, true, and I yeah. feel like, and we re realize that it's not causing too much harm in society perhaps. But I think, I mean, yeah. I can't see a future where we don't have more realistic games that involve more realistic actions from us could, to yeah. kill and to do things yeah. like this is there's almost no way to stop this train moving forward and and this goes to the second point of the of Bayless's original article where um so he he presents the problem and why he thinks it's a problem and the solutions he he then presents is, is about like changing the physics of how the shooting works mm. how guns work and how bullets work so um that I think is the more interesting. Well, maybe not more interesting, but like it's it's we, that's, we should dive into that where he's like trying to propose certain uh, should we call them restrictions on like how game design should be moving forward. And and he he tweeted about this where he was like don't don't cling on to the the physics or the the bullet curve thing that he suggested. He's like that's I'm not a game designer, you know. Like I'm just trying to put out suggestions as to like let's think differently in terms of the physics. Um, and and so, so Anton an actually to paintball. So Anton is is in agreement of this where his game H3 VR doesn't include humans. It's only like he has like either um, shooting ranges or um, like targets or even machines like robots that you shoot. And he's like, I don't want to create soft targets for you to mm -hmm. shoot. Um, so like, where where does I mean we're not game designers, but is that I don't think trying to put restrictions on how something gets made is going to change is going to affect any of the things that he presented. Like that's not, that's not yes, the, exactly. that's not I mean, the uh, I mean, it's, problem here. It's not a problem. I think if we think of VR as the ultimate empathy machine, right? I mean, you could argue that when VR develops further and there are more immersive present uh, devices that you feel the environment, you smell it, whatever, then people naturally will go away from the idea. I want to have a perfect shooting environment in VR to, I want to have a perfect chat environment. So it might be that naturally um, the users will pre prefer content that is not necessarily war-like because you don't want to experience war, I think. And another argument is maybe... Do you still hear me? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes, because my, my game first. And another argument would be um, like when you look at paintball. Like paintball is very realistic to actually shooting. So how would you argue is paintball you know, softened? by any guidance to make it not combat-like. So what did people do about paintball to make it, you know, less 
training like or, or less actually enabling you to do a real combat. And then maybe you could do the same things that you did over paintball. You know, it actually have splash. You don't have blood, I guess. I guess one important part, part is you should not maybe see blood coming out of a body you shoot at. Just paint. You just mark them. The bullets are colorful. So, I don't know. Yeah. A lot, of, a lot of the debate, a lot of the fight is... Um, it seems rooted in all the all the failures that people see in the current regulations and and way mm -hmm. of doing things meaning uh we have a rating system for video games that helps parents and uh families decide what's appropriate for their kids uh i don't think there's a similar rating system for you know around every vr game that's out there yet and when you put the headset on uh it's often very hard for the people other people in the family to know what the person in vr is experiencing um yeah so uh i, I think we, there's a lot don't of have that like you don't have that moment of the mom walking in and seeing the kid <laughs> you know like either watching a sex scene or like shooting you know whoever but this would be awkward yeah so i mean there's a lot of fit like i like uh, our rating system is great at telling people what you should do with you know what you how you should treat a video game it's it's really effective um and people in the industry don't want to have a rating system imposed on them uh by some kind of regulatory body and then you've mm -hmm. got the flip side of that where it's guns and you've got these groups of people that are just completely opposed in how we uh treat guns use guns uh, legalize guns um, and you've got the cross-border situation where the laws are completely different in every other country except for the United States. And so you get this debate that just, how do we apply the rules of current world to the rules of VR? And it just doesn't, it's so different. Matching up and figuring out how you treat it in VR is is a monstrous task. Like, I, I just feel bad for anyone that's trying to figure out how to provide even the simplest guidelines like how you how you create a video game or a vr game for a kid is potentially completely different to how you make a vr game for an adult who has a solid grip of reality and wants a realistic military shooter because that's the kind of content they want like that's always the argument is you've got the responsible people that aren't causing problems and you've got irresponsible people, and is it going to make it more likely for them to be irresponsible is a complete unknown right now. Right. And and I think the argument mm -hmm. goes into, like, the uh, in terms of, like, are you restricting art if you're trying to uh, restrict yes. the, the, the type of gunplay that you're going to have? And, and it goes, to again, to GTA, where, like, it is a realistic and, like, brutal game, but it is, like, a very good game. And it, it actually, in a sense, where, like, mm -hmm. some, there, you know, there's anti-war movies, right, where they include so much violence where you realize the, 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 the craziness, the, 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 the inhumane aspects of war where we shouldn't try and actively engage in. Um, and, and, and GTA can probably be argued in that similar realm where, like, you should probably not be enjoying the, the fact that um, you're doing these hein hein heinous, heinous, heinous things. Um, but so, yeah, I don't think restricting is is the right thing forward because the restrictions don't work in any sense. Um, when you have, oh, well, even if you put laws in the US. Hmm? We, we have the surge in year old restriction. I think you're only, I mean, technically you're allowed to use Oculus only when you're 13, I think, by the, uh, sure. um, by the terms. And I, I think one uh, guess, benefit. Guess who? You guess who's playing ben job simulator? Yeah. <laughs> guess who's playing job simulator? Yeah, okay, you know, like yeah, I mean, true, <laughs> but 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 you could also say that one of the benefits from those created ecosystems like Oculus or you know the world the world, the world garden is, for example, there is basically no way a young adult could access VR pornography easily. Like it's way harder to access VR pornography than accessing no normal pornography, for example. That's so for now. But that, that's world definitely garden, a different argument. Yeah. That's definitely a different. But argument. it's also that um, you maybe should, you know, I could argue let Oculus decide what content they want to show, right? Not that I find yeah, it good, I, but it would be a solution, maybe. I think, and I think they do. But I mean, where where should we where should we draw our, our conclusions from this, guys? Um, do you think Balenson needs to was done. on? So okay, that's that's one conclusion. We need we need more research on this topic. Um, was Balenson, um was he on like was his argument? sound and valid 
do you think? I, I, I think there's I think there's a lot we need to explore here. Um, I, I, I still want to... S- I'm curious about the rating systems for movies and the way that they... Like, how many categories of things do they have in the little descriptions below the actual rating for the movie? I have two kids, um, and I use a website called commonsense.com. I think it's Common Sense Media. Um, I think it's commonsense.com. Um, to basically determine whether my family or my kids are ready for the particular content I want to give them. So before we go out to the theater, we'll check that website and see, okay, it's dealing with this subject and this subject. And I don't really want to deal with those subjects with my kids yet. So um, I'm going to skip that movie. And I don't think um, between common sense and between the actual descriptions on the, like the rating system descriptions are, violence nudity you know it's it's six words it's not very it's obviously avoid spoilers um the common sense website i'll sometimes make my wife read it because it can go into uh the realm of uh spoilers and i don't want to get spoiled by the movie so i'll ask her to read it um <laughs> uh, in some cases but like i think we need some kind of equivalent for vr we need to know and let everyone in the situ- everyone know this is what it's got, uh, and um, I mean that's yeah, fine, so but that doesn't people can make more informed decisions. That doesn't stop people that are trying to use it for to shoot, right? Like, or to train to no. shoot. I mean, that's that's no, good for I mean, general mass audience, but uh, is that stopping any in any sense someone that wants to cause harm? No. And I think I guess this even goes into the whole realm of AI and like the how to no. how to keep our eyes open for for creating something that we can't control i mean i I think that's a very simplified argument and and i don't think even a valid one but like um so i i think my conclusion would be that um don't try to put restrictions try to create a rating system you're not going to stop you're people that are going to want to use this technology for harm are going to you're not going to be able to stop that and and i think where the the real conclusion can be drawn from is is actually on the real guns like and is is to yeah. like not take away guns because I think it, people both use it for hunting it and, and sport whatever, but but look at uh, look at other countries. Try to draw um, good examples from other countries, including Australia, including Japan, and um, and and VR VR isn't gonna you're not gonna be able to control yeah. stop mass shootings by trying to control VR. That's, no, that's my you need conclusion. to take care actually of the students. You need to you know instead of focusing on the evil new technology that is potentially causing some harm actually solves the problems in your society. Now, make sure that yeah. there are no people who want to shoot at their students, right? At, at, at students who they go together in school, you know, figure out how to prevent the that's, social that's, problems that cause it. Yeah. This is like the biggest issue that we have as a society around the whole globe, right? Yeah. I, it's, that's, that's it. Oh, that's so tricky. I mean, I... I'm assuming you have the same disgruntled people, you know, the same disgruntled students in every country. Uh, yes. The United States is the only one where they have very easy access to guns. Um, so it's like, yeah, we we could focus on solving society's ills, but um, we have kind of a special case in the United States where this type of content is available to in pair with a whole lot yes. of guns <laughs> and so like yeah you, you could you could focus on making bullying and 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 focus on a society that doesn't see guns as an option for when you've got your troubles um yeah it's it's such a blunt instrument and i don't know if there's so much about american culture and uh, culture in the united states specifically that when you've got a problem, you solve it with a gun. Um, that's why the American Dream game is such an interesting one to me. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen that, but no. it's it. I just got a press release on it this week, which was pretty appropriate timing. Is that the Fallout Five game, or no? This is the game where uh, it's it's made by an Australian, and they're poking fun at American culture, and you basically use guns uh, for everything in your life. So like cooking barbecue, you shoot, you, you, you use it as your tongs or whatever. And as you're a baby in the crib, you're shooting up 
uh, you're, you're shooting up your, your crib and stuff. <laughs> it's a VR game. Um, yeah, it's a VR game, and it's uh, specifically about uh, the American affinity for guns. Cool. Yeah, it's like the Simpson episode where well, Homer is trying to turn on the TV with a gun. <laughs> Um, okay, that, this has been a great discussion. I think one last thing I want to add is, is I think the fact that uh, it's, it's <sighs> okay, so I, uh, this is beyond VR. I think the, the, the gun argument has become completely politicized between like Republicans and Democrats because like, <laughs> oh God, should we go in this realm? The NRA funds or okay. lobbies towards specific, sp- specific politicians that then and not maybe not in a prid quo, quo sense, but like enact certain um, laws to then being in accordance to the NRA, and then the argument then turns into like Republicans wanting to uh, to argue for guns, and then Repo- Democrats trying to uh, ban guns, or like at least that's the simplified version of it. And however, if there if people weren't in these political parties, I don't think we'd be having this debate. I don't I don't think the people are like that strongly tied to guns. And it's actually the gun debate and the second amendment debate is is a pretty recent one. Um, Radio lab had a great episode where they re they re-released this episode that they did a few years back. Um, I'd highly recommend to to look it up. It's probably came out of a week or two ago and it's um, a rerun from their more perfect series. uh, That's about laws. And it, it actually talks about like, that the whole gun, the Second Amendment gun debate came from first the Black Panthers, that were the, essentially the first ones that really argued that um, guns are in, uh, gun, having guns as an individual is protective in your Second Amendment rights. Because up until that point, people were th- looking at it more like a militia sense. And then the NRA then takes that argument and also like spins it into their mm. uh, the Republican path platform in like the the eighties with Reagan. So um, there's a fascinating history there to be looked at. I hope we did justice to Jeremy Balinson's article. Um, and if he's listening to this, you know, if you have if he has thoughts, please uh, f- feel free to reach out to all of us. We'd love to have you on. Um, to, if if we did any kind of injustice to your arguments, please let us know. Um, I tried to kind of break it down to like a, f- a constructive philosophical argument that we can um, go into. So Cause, yeah, because you got into the red versus blue thing. Um, I want to put out one, one thing I hope happens in VR is I hope uh, VR becomes a platform for debate that is more effective mm. than uh, current platforms for debate. Mm. Unlikely. I don't but yes, know. I hope for that. Too. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like it's so far <laughs> we've got awesome, you know, right? VR chat, which is like meme culture, um, which takes meme culture to an extreme. But um, I, the red versus blue, the way when I hear all these debates happening, the thing that frustrates me about everything that's going on is it always feels like the argument and the discussion is framed by someone else. Every, like you have to have your debate and your discussion in the framework that someone else has defined for you. And that's in right now it's either the Democrats or the Republicans and it's either, you know, like you were saying, and I would hope that we can get some kind of civilized debate that helps people understand both issues more deeply. And um, yeah, it's unlikely, but it's definitely one of my hopes that uh, all the social interaction that I hope comes to VR uh, makes it possible to have really effective debates over time. Agreed.